Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. My name is Emily Tanis Lickle. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the pastor here at Elkai UCC. Uh, it's a great morning, and it's so good to be in community. Let us take a deep breath together, breathing in the peace of God, the light of love, <sighs> and exhaling. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded, traditional land of the Coast Salish people. We honor with gratitude the original stewards of this land, the Duwamish tribe, who are still here. We boldly proclaim that this is a place of radical welcome and inclusion. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here today at Elkai UCC. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. Bringing all of our concerns, our questions, our doubts, and our hopes, we come to explore the mystery of God. Through the power of the Spirit, we long to discern the mind of Christ, that love might be our center and justice our true aspiration leaving behind our loyalties to all that hinders the flourishing of life. Holy Spirit, come reveal the wisdom of God. Let us pray. Restorative one, your wisdom is a comfort to us. You heal the wounds within, around, and between us. In the quiet places of our hearts, make known to us what pain remains neglected. Tend, O oh God, to all the fears that keep us from receiving love's guidance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hear these words of grace. In all those things that weigh you down, in all the muck that clouds your way. The shame that whispers lies to you about who you are. Our God is greater than all of it. You can let it go. You can begin again. You can be free. God's wisdom will guide you. I invite you to turn to those around you and say, wisdom is with you. Hello, everybody. Today's scripture is 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 through 13. When I came to you, siblings, I did not come proclaiming the testimony of God to you with superior speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were made not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are being destroyed. But we speak God's wisdom, a hidden mystery, which God decreed before the ages for our glory and which none of the rulers of this age understood. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within. So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, 
but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Uh, and we speak of these things in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. I've heard from some of you that you would like a primer on the Bible, a Bible 101. This comes up often in our Tuesday noon Bible study on Zoom. Some of you are brand new to the Bible, and even those of you who have been reading the Bible for maybe decades feel like you still have a lot to learn. Well, we all do. On Sunday mornings, we explore just a story here, or a poem, or a letter there, and we don't always see the bigger picture. And there is always more to learn, more to seek, because the Bible is dynamic, adaptable. It is read and interpreted differently in different times. And every time we come back to it, we are not the same as we were, and the world is not the same as it was. I read and interpret the Bible differently than I did when I was in seminary, different than I did when I was in my first call, differently every time I prepare a sermon, because things are always shifting. And so, yeah, I know, I promise you a sermon series to make the Bible really accessible. And then the first scripture I choose is this convoluted piece of a letter from Paul about wisdom and mystery, things that are spiritual and unspiritual. It might seem a little bit like a bait and switch, but I promise this is going somewhere. <laughs> We're starting with wisdom for a reason. Because we are on a wisdom quest. The letter says, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Wisdom was with God at creation. Wisdom is here now with us. What Paul is saying in this letter to the people in Corinth is that spiritual people, which is each one of us, we have God's Holy Spirit to help us discern wisdom. We are seeking wisdom just as the early Christians sought wisdom, just as Jewish people throughout the ages have sought wisdom wisdom, just as people everywhere seek wisdom. We are on a wisdom quest. And here is our first mission. Today, we pose the question, where did the Bible come from? The Bible came from the writings of humans who were seeking wisdom. Wisdom about God, about humanity, about themselves and their place in the world. The Bible is the whole library of books that came from stories and poems and teachings that were told and retold over the fire and at bedsides and in gathered sacred community and then were written and rewritten over the course of 1,300 years from people who were trying to make sense of the world, who sought wisdom. The Bible was and is inspired by God, yes, but written by people. The Bible being the word of God does not mean that God directed people from God's heavenly throne to put thus and so on parchment. Some Christians believe that the writers were conduits of exactly what God wanted written, written down. Biblical scholars generally don't teach this. And when we read the Bible, it's pretty clear it was written by human beings. It's very human. So what does it mean when we say the Bible 
is inspired. This concept comes from Paul's second letter to Timothy that says that all scripture is inspired by God. And the word here, inspired, literally translates God breathed. God's breath is in all of it. It is inspired by God and written by human beings. And now we, thousands of years later, can be inspired by it. This is a collaborative, mysterious process of practicing wisdom. The Bible is not God saying, this is who I am. The Bible is about people in the past saying, this is how we understood God from our place in the world, from our time. God breathed in that. God didn't correct them or edit them. God breathed. God was with them in it. People in the past imagined what God was like. They expressed their experience of the divine in poetry and prose. God breathed. People of faith over the course of centuries kept the stories and writings circulating. God breathed in that, too. And just as important as where did the Bible come from is when did it come from? Because it's really old. <laughs> yeah, that matters. It must be reinterpreted for today. And we can learn how to do this from the Bible itself by looking at how the prophets reinterpret earlier scriptures, how Jesus reimagines God and how God breathes new life into the old law. The writers of the New Testament were reading the Old Testament and saying, wow, these are really old books. There's some super outdated stuff in here. They were saying that nearly 2,000 years ago. King David lived 1,000 years before then. Abraham and Sarah lived 2,000 years before that, or 2,000 years before them, 4,000 years before us. That's a lot of thousands of years. I can't even comprehend that. It cannot be overstated how the context in which the Bible was written was extremely different from today. The original authors of the Bible worshipped a God up in the sky, just beyond that dome of blue water, from their place on a flat earth. They had no idea that the earth was round or had a concept of the solar system. When there was a natural disaster or a war, when there was destruction as far as their eye could see, there was no news media or internet to allow them to see beyond it. So they assumed it was everywhere. It was the whole earth. And they needed a way to make sense of it. They needed stories to make meaning, to imagine how God was part of it. They were part of a polytheistic culture where belief in many gods was assumed. Slavery was the norm, and the people of Israel themselves were enslaved for hundreds of years. Women did not have rights. Queer people did not have the freedom to live into their true selves. The writers of the Bible lived and moved in this ancient world and experienced God through an ancient lens. So for the most part, it doesn't work for us to lift up their exact words and just plop them into today. They need reinterpretation. Scripture is dynamic. It breathes. It has spirit. We reimagine God in every age. And we are dependent on God's spirit to help us discern wisdom. 
Paul explained how to seek wisdom by writing, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. Wisdom comes from God and not from the world. How does this happen? It's collaborative. It's experiential. It's mysterious. There's no five-step plan for wisdom. But we can trust our own innate spirituality. We all have it. We can trust that when we read and explore the scripture, God is breathing there, inspiring. The Bible came from humans seeking wisdom. The Hebrew scriptures, what Christians call the Old Testament, were written over the course of several centuries and were compiled by Jewish rabbis and scholars. By the time Jesus walked the earth, the 39 books of Hebrew scriptures were complete. The 27 books of the New Testament were written about 100 years after Jesus walked the earth. Of the 27 books of the New Testament, 21 of them are letters, 13 of them probably written by Paul. Do you think the Apostle Paul had any idea that his letters would stand the test of 2,000 years? I mean, there's no way. I imagine he hoped there would be some kind of a legacy with his words. But he wouldn't have fathomed 2,000 years into the future. The Bible was written by people who are writing for their time. It's been said that reading the New Testament is like reading someone else's mail, someone else's 2,000-year-old mail. That is not going to directly translate to today. It takes wisdom to discern. The Bible is a source of wisdom because it is dynamic, because it asks us to ask it a lot of questions. It's not a rule book, but there will be more on that next week, so come back. So how was it determined what would be included in this particular library of books that we call the Bible? The list of books in the Bible is called the canon. Canonization, deciding which selections really stood the test of time, did not happen all at once in one meeting. It was a process that occurred over centuries of time. And the writings that persisted were the stories that were told and retold again and again and again. The songs that were sung so often they were woven into the fabric of the community. The teachings that kept on circulating. And as you might imagine, there were many, many meetings to make those decisions. The decisions about what would be included depended on which writings encapsulated how the people at the time understood and experienced God. And by the mid-300s, the canon was pretty much agreed upon. Later, during the Protestant Reformation of the 1500s, the Protestant reformers settled on 66 books instead of the Catholic Church's 73. The Bible is incredibly diverse. It was written by people in hugely different socioeconomic circumstances, locations, experience, and times. These writings were filtered by humans for a human purpose. The four Gospels are different from one another, not only because the witnesses were different, because they heard and saw differently, but because they had different agendas. And we might think of agendas sometimes in a negative way, but we can think of it positively too. Like, what was really important to that author? And what was the message they felt called to give to their people at that particular time? What did they feel called 
to communicate? How did they discern God breathing? The Bible was written by humans from a long time ago and across time who were seeking wisdom. Why is this important? It helps us to understand God and humanity. Take something like people wondering why God is depicted in the Old Testament as being pretty violent. Anybody wondered that? Well, the Hebrew scriptures were written in violent times. And in a polytheistic culture, where all wars and disasters were ascribed to gods, that made sense for those writers of those times. People needed to make sense of the violence, to put meaning to it. They told stories to try and explain it, to put God in it. Their concept of God, their theology, it fit with this. Ours doesn't. Their stories of ancient gods conquering lands and peoples, that was a commonplace way of thinking. That concept of God for us no longer holds. And by the way, it didn't hold for Jesus either. Does that mean we throw out the Old Testament? No, this is still our book. This is still a sacred source of wisdom. It is still a witness of how a people experienced God, their seeking of wisdom. But we read it not as a prescription for how to live, but a description of the wisdom seekers of ancient ages. We imagine and experience God differently because we live in a different time. We don't ascribe everything around us to acts of God's. When I look at the violence in the world, I imagine God not as an instigator, but as a wailing mother in mourning. This is part of our growing together as disciples of Jesus Christ. It is a lifelong process of being formed in faith. Where did the Bible come from? It was written by people, yes. But it also came from God's breathing. It came from mystery, from collaboration, from the seeking of wisdom. And so let us join ancient letter writers and gospel preachers, parable spinners and singer-songwriters. Let us be wisdom seekers, knowing that as spiritual people, which all humans are, we do not seek alone. We seek with one another. We seek trusting that God is breathing among us, breathing with us, that the Bible is dynamic. We keep reimagining it and reinterpreting it. The Bible, the Bible comes from all of us.